His Excellency the Ambassador of Palestine, the State of Palestine in Sri Lanka, and my friend Emin Amin, whom I have known for many years, in both as a journalist and also on a personal level. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, that I, I understand that many of you speak and understand Tamil, but unfortunately I cannot speak in Tamil. So I will make it bilingual. Is, okay. <coughs> Uh, my speech was made easier by Mr. Mohammed because he mentioned many of the historical f facts that are related to the evolution of this question. So, Namut Api me me prasne again a katha kiri me di Api moon then barapatal gatalu atti you know. Your Excellency, there is a fundamental problem that we are confronting when we are discussing this crucial issue. That is to get the right story into your hand. It is very difficult. Make it in Haripudumai, we are living in an area, there is a plethora of news, information, comments, videos, websites, so on. But unfortunately, the real truth is very difficult to, yes, make out. That is one of the problems. Now, for example, I would uh, like to uh, quote one example. Uh, Jeremy Bowen, he is the BBC international editor based in Israel. Just because I am quoting BBC, don't think that I take BBC as the God word, no. But he is a knowledgeable person in this matter. He says, no one has the full story. This is our problem. Why is that? The reason is, as I see, some of you may not believe, the major mainstream corporate media dominated by the rich, Powerful countries are always biased. BBC, CNN, Sky News, New York Times, Associated Press, all these news sources are biased. They are opinion, they provide us with enough information. But at the same time, the underlying tone is that they are pro Western, they are there to serve the domination of the world by the Western powerful countries. This is the bitter truth. One example, you can remember in our own country, some in somewhere in 1986, I don't remember the exact year, 169 Muslim who were praying in a mosque in Katankudi was brutally murdered. Even then they didn't call LTTE a terrorist organization. But when Hamas launched this attack on 7 October, they immediately called them terrorists and brutal attack. That is how they described these events. Western media, not only Western media, even in media, in, in, if you take in, in India or Russia or uh, even in Sri Lanka for that matter, they have their own agenda. Therefore, it is very difficult to ascertain the truth for which we have to associate with, we have to deal with as much as possible other alternative news sources. It is not to say that I know everything about this matter. This is a highly complex issue, highly complex and complicated, which has a long history. 
But first, I would like to give you few inf facts and information about the unprecedented humanitarian tragedy that is unfolding in Gaza Strip since 7 October. It doesn't mean that there was nothing happening before 7 October. This, this tragedy has been happening since 14 May 1948, on which date the State of Israel was established. But this is the, the current uh, stage of this conflict began with the Hamas attack on Israel, southern Israel, on 7th October. I must say that as a human being, and as I don't condone, I, we don't approve, killing of civilians, including women, children, wherever, whoever who does it, we don't condone. But this problem has a deep-rooted causes. It has a long history. Before coming to this history, Please let me give you some facts about the unprecedented tragedy which is unfolding in uh, Gaza Strip and also in the West Bank, as Mr. Mohammed said. Just few few information and facts. More than 11,000 Palestinian men, up to now, at the moment I am speaking, more than 11,000 Palestinian men women and children, nearly half of them are children, have been killed. Thousands more are buried under the rubbles of the buildings which have collapsed as a result of continuous, relentless air strikes by Israeli defense forces. Since 6, 7 October, nearly close to 11,000 Palestinians have died, have been killed, really. The Russian military operation in Ukraine, or the Russian invasion of Ukraine, began on 24th October 2022. Now it is about 21 months. During these 21 months, according to UN estimates, only 7,000 civilians have been killed. Then you can imagine the extent and magnitude of this crime. Ukraine Yudhya Arambavela, it's a terrible war. Masa Visiyaka, according to Eksajjatingi Sankhya Lekana, at me Sankhya Lekana, Tharima Ne. Since they are the only available sources of information. Such is the magnitude and the extent of this terrible tragedy. Number two, no water, no fuel, no food, no medicine. Can you imagine in our own country, when we didn't have fuel, electricity, for just maybe for one month or two months, we have seen the people's agony that took place in this country. Then can you, can, anyone can imagine what can be the situation in Gaza Strip. Yesterday I read some uh, foreign reports it says, hospitals, out of the 36 hospitals in Gaza, 12 have already been closed, and, and other major hospitals are not functioning. UN Secretary General, I don't say that UN is a very powerful organization. Really, it's powerless. I will deal with it briefly later. At this moment, I would like to quote UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Guterres, I believe he is a sensible man, balanced person. He says, the nightmare in Gaza 
is more than a humanitarian crisis. It is a crisis of humanity. Make them I mean so that I pass the obey mark to go hurry. World has failed. Entire humanity has failed when it comes to this disaster, human-made disaster. Secretary General rightly say, says it's a, the nightmare in Gaza is more than a humanitarian crisis. It's a crisis of humanity. The same thing was repeated by the chairman of the current chairman of the United Nations Security Council. He is a Chinese. You know, UN Security Council is uh, UN Security Council is chaired by in each month by different representative of a different country. At this during this month, it is chaired by a Chinese de delegate. That gentleman also yesterday said it is more than a humanitarian disaster. It's a disaster relating to the entire humanity. So I think that few facts more than adequate to understand the magnitude and the extent of the tragedy that is taking place in this small piece of land. What is this? In my view, it is not a matter of right to self-defense. When the Hamas attack took, uh, took place, happened on 7 October, Israel declared, and Israel position was vehemently, hardly supported by the United States and other Western powers. Their position was that Israel is acting on the principle of right to defend. Yes, any country has the right to defend. If Sri Lanka is attacked, if its people are attacked, it is the duty of the state or the government to safeguard its people. But in this case, what is happening in Gaza, the war effort, the attacks taking place in Gaza far exceeds the limits of the principle of right to defense. Yes. The mama, mage position like Israel is tamangya ne kiye no ma. Apata araksha va sandha aityakti no. Oh, tamangya minisu meru. E rati andu e araksha karan no ne itabashi piyavare ganu. But in this case, it goes far beyond that. Ekai ape position ne. It it goes to the level of genocide. Genocide means, I, I hope you all understand. Please let give me a few minutes to under, uh, explain the basic tenets of the Genocide Convention adopted by the UN General Assembly in 1948, just three years after the formation of the organization. The UN Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the crime of genocide, 1948, that is the title of the convention, according to which genocide is described as the intentional destruction of a national, ethnic, racial or religious group in whole or in part. Then genocide has five elements or five acts. One is the first deed. Killing members of the group. Now we all know members of the group, when we say members of the group in relation to Gaza are the Palestinian people. They are being killed like Mr. Mohammed said or I mean said that According to UK Save the Children Fund, every 10 minutes a child is killed. Can you imagine? Every 10 minutes. 
This, this, is, this doesn't come from uh, pro-Palestinian sources. It comes from the UK, United Kingdom, which is strongly supportive of the Israeli military operation. They are giving aid, giving money, giving aircraft. Now you, have, you must have seen, US aircraft carriers are there in the Mediterranean, close to Israel. Recently, a uh, Ohio-class submarine, nuclear submarine, has been sent there by the United States. So they are very supportive of the Israel position. But even then, the UK Save the Children Fund says, a child is killed every 10 minutes. Then number two, the second element of the genocide, causing seriously Sorry, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. Causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. I think, I mean, you must have watched Al Jazeera yesterday. There was a news item over Al Jazeera television saying the first rain has come to Gaza yesterday evening. Can you imagine thousands of thousands of people who are living in temporary tents? What is their position when rain is coming? Al Jazeera showed that people are trying to stop the flooding of their tents. So this is the, these are bodily and mental harm caused to members of the group. Then number three deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in the whole or part. Number four, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. Now it is happening. Children are being killed and now we have reports even from Western sources, women are giving birth to children without having painkillers. Caesarean surgeries are being done without anesthesia. This is the situation there. This is collective punishment. If I do something wrong, wrong no one has the right, even the government, to kill my father, mother, children, and my wife. It is collective punishment. It is against humanity. It is against the basic tenets of justice. Then number five, forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. Forcibly transferring children. I would like to mention some uh, something related to this. You know recently, last, uh, during this month, the International Criminal Court, which is located in The Hague, in Holland, issued a warrant to arrest the Russian President Vladimir Putin. What was the allegation? The allegation was transferring Ukrainian children to other places. I don't know whether that allegation is, accusation is, True or not, that is a different matter. So, transferring children from one place to another, from one group to other, is an element of genocide. So, there is genocide taking place in Gaza State. So what, is, what is the root cause of this problem? Really, since this is a highly complex issue, some of the facts have been explained to you by Mr. Mohammed. I also don't know everything, but I, even the things that I know cannot be said here within this short period. But I say, this is my opinion. This is not whims and fancies. My opinion based on my studies. Everything I say here, you can verify them whether they are true or not. I will give you the sources as well. This, the root cause is the 
imperialist project to dominate the world, first by the British, the United Kingdom, then by the United States after the end of the Second World War. This is the tragedy. This is this is what is this is the real root co root cause of this terrible human tragedy. Mr. Mohammed mentioned that the inception of problem this problem. I also believe the inception of this problem is the Balfour Declaration. Arthur Balfour, then UK British Foreign Secretary. He was a British Prime Minister as well. Arthur Balfour, on 2nd November 1917, wrote a letter to Walter Hotschild in UK. He was a Jewish leader, stating, he explained that, that the United Kingdom will establish a national home for Jews in the land of Palestine. My question is this, if I am wrong, please tell me. Do I have the right to build a house for my child in your home garden, in your estate, on your land? United Kingdom or Britain, which is in one corner of the world, promises the Jewish communi community in Britain to establish a national home in some other people's land. That is how this tragedy began, really. Not only they do that, as Mr. Mohammed very clearly explained. They said, they promised, we will do that. And Balfour, Lord Balfour once said, we will not see the opinion of the Palestinians. Now please see, gentlemen, these are the very people who talk about democracy. These are the very people who talk about human rights. So they, they promise the Jewish community to establish a national home for Jewish people without seeking the opinion of the people who are living on that particular land. That is why I say this is a, this is an imperialist project to dominate the world. Yes, these imperialist powers, they want to keep their hegemony over the entire humanity. If there were no Israel, the United States would have to invent Israel to protect its interests in the region. Israel kele kattibuni nattan America wata siddha wena Israel ek nirmanaya karanna. Mokata da e kalape tamange interests raka ganima sada. What are these interests? So really Mr. Muhammad explained. Firstly, it's oil. The present industrial civilization is based on the consumption of fuel oil. When it comes to industrial production, 80% of energy used in production process comes from fuel oils. When it comes to transport, 90% of energy that is used comes from fuel, fossil fuel. Where are they? Of the known oil reserves of the world, roughly 65% are located in the Gulf, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, Qatar, those are the countries. Other 35% of the energy known oil reserves are dispersed all over the world in small percentages. One, just one other example. Why do they want an Israel in the Middle East? You must have heard about now next year, like in our country, 
there is the U.S. presidential election. One of the, the potential candidate is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. He belongs to the famous John Kennedy family. Robert F. Kennedy says, Israel is a bulwark for us. Israel is a bulwark for us. It is almost like an sorry. It is almost like having an aircraft carrier in the Middle East. Madha Paradiga Israel Tiana Eka Madha Paradiga aircraft carrier katiano. Mangita me Mahatura Hamu Dano what is an aircraft carrier is. Make me Sri Lanka is an aircraft, permanent aircraft carrier in the Indian Ocean. Sri Lanka That's a different story. But here I hope you got the point. Robert F. Kennedy bluntly says. He very directly done to says, Israel is a bulwark for us. It is almost like having an aircraft carrier in the Middle East. Not only that, he goes on to say, if Israel disappears, Russia, China, and BRICS countries will control 90% of the oil in the world. And that would be cataclysmic for U.S. national security. Not because they love Jews or they love uh, Israel. But there is another fact. The Jewish community is very, very strong in the United States. Very, very strong. They are rich, super rich, and also powerful. They run the U.S military industrial complex in, to a large extent. Very powerful community in the US and in, also in other European countries. But that is not the crux of the problem. The problem, the requirement is that they need Middle East Gulf oil for their economies to run. The United, the population of the US is only 5% of the world population. But the energy cons consumption of the United States is 25% of the world total. Where does that come from? They come from the Gulf. That is why they divide the Gulf countries. Divide and rule. You may have heard that they have entered into some agreements which are called Abrahamic Accords in 20, uh, 2020 and 2021. As a result of Abrahamic Accords, some of the Gulf countries are aligned with the United States. One is very, it's very well known, United Arab Emirates. So they divide the Arabic countries, Muslim countries, for their own benefit. So the, this is the major requirement, this is the main crux of the problem as I understand. So, what can we do? A human tragedy is unfolding, happening. Innocent, unarmed civilians, men, women of all ages, and children, even infants, are being killed. The human, it remains very passive. No concrete action has been taken so far. In fact, not only in this case. When Iraq was invaded, when Afghanistan was invaded in 2001, what was the justification they presented? They said, those who committed this attack on New York trade centers are of Afghan origin or they came from Afghanistan. But it was not true. Of the 17 or 19 people who were involved in the 9-11 attack, 
16 uh, from Saudi Arabia, not from Afghanistan, but they have invaded Afghanistan and reduced that country, which flourished some time back into rubbish. Then in 2003, they invaded Iraq on the pretext that Saddam Hussein was in possession of huge arsenal of weapons of mass destruction. Now everybody knows that now it is not true. <coughs> so humanity is failing when these international large-scale crimes commit, are committed. <coughs> Why? The reason is that now the world has changed, as he said very correctly. With, with the demise of the Soviet Union and the demise of the world social state system and the weakening of the non-aligned movement paved the way for this injustice and to perform the United States and other Western countries to act as naked imperialists. This is the problem. Therefore, in my view, in under present circumstances, the only international organization which is available, it is not perfect, it has many, many weaknesses, is the United Nations, but it is powerless, it is toothless. UN is a prisoner of the of its own international internal organizational structure. For example, when this matter was taken up at the United Nations Security Council every time, a call for a ceasefire was vetoed by the United States and other veto-wielding countries. This is a problem. The very organization which has been established to preserve world peace and security has become a prisoner of its own structure. So this is the problem that the entire humanity is facing. In Sri Lanka, this is my opinion, gentlemen, you may not agree. In Sri Lanka, this country faced a separatist war. The state, the government, has to deal with it military at, militarily at last. But in this country, while the war was going in north or east, Tamil population was living here in Colombo safely. They were not killed like Palestinians in Gaza. But what happened later? The United States, United Kingdom and other Western countries used the UN organization called UN Human Rights Council to accuse Sri Lanka of genocide and war crimes. In this case, war crimes are being committed almost on a daily basis, but no one is doing anything. No one is capable of, capable of doing anything. Not only that, they are these Western leaders look at this tragedy in a very cynical attitude. I just uh, quote some uh, a statement by President Biden. President, you must have seen. I don't have to tell you. President Biden said once recently. I don't believe whether these casual civilian casualties are really true. Yeah, you know, they be swas and hello again. Even the name I even got to you know. I am sure innocents have been killed, and it is the price of waging war. For him, killing babies is a price for waging war. This is stated by the leader of the world's number one economy and the world's most powerful country in terms of military might. So that at present the humanity is, I think, helpless. We countries like Sri Lanka and others 
can only express their view, opinion. Recently, I have seen that about 159 uh, members of parliament have submitted a petition or some memoranda to the UN office in Colombo and His Excellency the Ambassador giving their opinion. Other than that, at present, really no country is taking any concrete measure to at, not to help Palestine, at least to help the carnage, the massacre that is happening on a daily basis during day and night. So I think, in my view, it will take a long time to realize justice, not only for Palestinian people, but, only, but for all the entire humanity. But we, do, we should not get discouraged. We should not be pacifist, pessimistic. I think people have to be educated. They must be told the truth and they must be encouraged to come forward. Really, this is not happening in our country. I don't know why. In Western countries, in London, Paris, New York, in other Western cities, thousands of people, sometimes in London, there were demonstrations, according to Western BBC reports, nearly more than 300,000 people have particip participated. Almost all of them are young people, not old people like us. But unfortunately, in our country, the whole society is depoliticized. The young generation is depoliticized. They don't know what is happening in other countries, not only in other countries, even in their own country. That is the tragedy that we are facing at present. So uh, my view is that without getting discouraged, we people like us, and journalists and clergy and enlightened politicians must take, take the lead to inform people, to pe uh, encourage people to protest and to seek justice, if not today, at least tomorrow or sometime in the future. With that, I express my solidarity. It won't help, I know but as a human being with the Palestinian people who are suffering, who are being killed, who are being massacred. Thank you, gentlemen. With